Come dump with me. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? That's right. It's the time of week where you are dumping in sync with Giant Bomb on the voicemail dump truck for this Thursday, January 11th, 2024. We've got quite the crew wearing the reflective vests, taking out the trash, listening to your dumps, and doing whatever we want because we love playing in your garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff Bacalar. I'm joined by the one, the only, Jan Ochoa. How are you? I'm doing great. I've gone back to 70% from my 72% yesterday. So you've taken a step backwards is what you're implying, is yeah, that? Yeah, like I stepped on like a little, like a little rake. Little little uh, uh, relapse rake is yeah. like we like to call it. Oh, you know, do they still make the little uh, pizza table things that they put in the middle of the pizza? Oh, like those little yeah. little outdoor patio furniture miniatures. Yeah, things? for my dollhouses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why you want one? Is that going to fix your your health? Or? I was just asking. You know, okay, it, it would okay. accompany my little rakes really well. Okay, very good, very good. All right, uh, we're graced with two other very special guest hosts on this program, someone who has not graced us in a very long time with his dumpy presence, the one, the only, Alex Boniello. How are you, Alex? I'm doing good. I thought you were going to say Tam, and I was like, yeah. Tam's surely been here before me. <laughs> no, uh, I've had enough of Tam today. Tam's well, also here. Hello, Hi, Tam. how are you, Jeff? How's it going? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Okay, here's what happened, everybody. I'll tell you why I'm <laughs> I'm a little not angry with Tam, but very upset with him. Wow. We, just, we recorded the finale of Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure today, mm -hmm. and um, he's just rude. He's just a rude person who hates me. Whoa, hates whoa, me whoa, whoa, whoa! He hates me, and he and he just doesn't say it out loud. And uh, I I'm glad I can I can talk about this in my safe space with my friends and my colleagues. And yeah. um, I think I think the the world at large knows the kind of person I am, especially the people on the giant bomb uh, streams. And I think they know that I would never do such a thing like that. So your attempt, your Donald Trump like attempt to uh, present me as someone that I am not has failed once again. Jeff Bacala. Nobody you? believes you. How dare you even mention that fucking pig's name in the same breath as me, you son of a bitch, Alex. Please, mm -hmm. how do we pivot out of this negative energy? Um, I think we pivot by saying uh, it's a beautiful day here in New York. It's, uh, it's, it's looking nice. We've had many days of not beautiful. So yeah. this is great. This is nice. I don't know how it is on the other coast, but that's kind of part of the price of admission is that generally it's overall nice. It's nice oh, today right. here in San Francisco. Good. Yeah. Good. It was, it's it's too cold. I don't know how to deal with it. What is cold to you? Fifty. Yeah, that's that sounds accusatory. No, no, I understand. No, no, no. I know, no, no, I know that me? I'm not acclimated uh, for this. What, what does your sorry ass believe cold to be? Uh, 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 freezing, uh, dire fifty degrees. Yeah, 50. I was. Fifty is pretty uh, yeah. cold for mm. normies, right? It's, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, know. it's fifty-two looked at my phone oh heat wave yeah if it were i would actually <laughs> say like if that if that came up a little bit that's actually my personal ideal temperature sure sure uh yeah. i like a jacket kind of thing i yeah. i yeah. it's been it's been pretty cold over here though i was in uh i was in canada recently and i always forget i i forget every time it's just not the same up no. there it's no. like it's 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 unbelievable it like takes your breath from you it's pretty wild <laughs> i was in montreal once and like that's exactly where i was yeah yeah like thanksgiving time which and you're just like people fucking live here what <laughs> people just do their thing here all year round it's it is a cold that you cannot really uh turn your back to it is no. it'll get you it'll get you and they're fine with it which is unbelievable because it makes you the visitor feel really dorky because they're like fully just wearing like one of those like patagonia vests and, like, yeah. and that's it and you're like what, what's going i'm crying and they're like just chilling like <laughs> you get out of a car and they're like okay buddy good luck with uh -huh. that that's you right. know um well that was a good distraction the weather always does that thank you alex appreciate you're it welcome. um 
How's everyone doing otherwise? I want to hear about uh, everyone's January. Are we are we feeling good? Are we are we having a successful run of 2024 uh, so far? W- where are we at collectively? It's supposed to be my month because the month of January. And it's you. I was actually talking to Alex about this, that this year I was actually going to take the approach of new year, new me. And then, you know, I start with COVID, you know, slightly kneecapped me there. But then Alex Mm -hmm. drops the gem, the knowledge dart of, technically, it's still a new you, it's just bad. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Silver linings, man. Silver linings playbook, you know? He's the Bradley Cooper to my J-Law. I've never seen that movie. (laughs) I'm going to assume that's what the relationship is. Whatever you need. Uh, There we go. Whatever you need. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think people put way too much pressure on themselves to reinvent themselves every year. I personally love to be the same shitty me every year. <laughs> so yeah, it's working for you, I think. So like, uh, who told who asked you? Shut up. <laughs> See what I'm saying, everybody? Listen, I saw a movie this week, and I think it has single handedly saved cinema. Okay, I was yeah. actually really in the mood because I've seen like everything this year what did you see hold on hold okay. on can we guess i know what it is but can you, well, you guys know guess? what it is tam yeah. i know too tam i think okay tam knows. I, I, I have seen it and i can corroborate this movie is incredible is it new yes yes, yes. is it have ha, has it been discussed on the well, giant bomb street no, 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 give no. me one more there's too many movies <laughs> okay like man. Two, two words no 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 two words is too much <laughs> no it has not been discussed i don't think we've ever talked about no, it really no, that no, could no, be a lie not. we have not why don't you just? I can't guess. There's too many movies. I, I'm very. I'm. I'm in a very. Should, advantageous... should we charade it? Let's do charade. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This two okay. words. This is good, great for First audio word. listener. Pants. O- okay. Is Tam holding lives? his hands? Sad. He, he seems money. He's no. It's not that. He see. Yeah. Okay. I can't play because I know it. There's there's a strike. He's money. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I know what the movie is, and I think it works X out. Money is it? Is this the? Is this the the game GameStop m- movie? Paw Patrol. <laughs> money. With... No, no. Well, I don't know what's going on, man. We no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's it's poor things. Okay. Poor, poor things. Poor things. Oh, dude, dude. Right, dude. Hate. Come on. <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's so good. I, uh, I don't. I have not. The, uh, a movie hasn't like uh, affected me like this in a very long time. Well, what is? Wow, this has became a movie podcast. Uh, yeah, I, I'm fine with that. I'm. I, I was nuts. Totally, totally nuts about it. Oh my uh, god! I I went in not knowing a thing. I'm super on purpose. I went mm. really out of my way. Uh, I uh, live near like a hoity-toity art house movie theater, and so that's where I got to see it too. And it's like just with uh, people who like really want to be there. If that makes yeah, sense, it's of like course, a different yes, of barrier of entry. Um, you know, no uh, AMC Stubbs members were there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just Slander. killer. I, I, I uh, <laughs> if if I may, I if I may very lightly spoil an image in this film that happens early. I think that's fair because I think it's, it's it's overflowing with these moments. So Willem Dafoe burping up a bubble very slowly <laughs> is like one of my favorite things I've seen in a long time. I feel like everyone Willem Dafoe memes like, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I feel like that meme needs to be put to bed and have just him going. (laughs) It's, uh, you know, like there was something I said something during it. I was watching this. I'm just like, man, they they can never let this dude stop making movies like he has. He must be required now. Like every two years, I'm expecting something. Uh, oh my God. Like, oh mm-hmm. my actual God. Uh, yeah, it really, I, I, it restored my faith in, in a lot of that because he, I've seen a good amount of stuff this year and this really, he would out. have saved Aquaman too. If Willem Dafoe was in, well, he's not Aquaman a miracle 2. worker. I mean, what are we, <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I'm like trying to like very briefly, like if you're like a, uh, if you like weird and like, hmm. If you if you just like weird imagery and like like and I, I mean this as a compliment, like this movie looks like what like mid journey wishes it was making. Oh, mm-hmm. totally. Do you know what that's I a, mean? That's like, a beautiful sentence. Yeah. It's put like, it on the box. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's the kind of like visual style that like these these they think they're churning out, but like this is coming from a 
from people if mm-hmm. that makes yeah, sense. It's, yeah. Just, it's a stunning thing uh, so the way 100%. the way i look at it is like you know how most modern fairy tales the western ones there's always like oh it can actually be traced back to a very dark version of it and from like germany grim fairy tales that's what this feels like it's it's like a bit alice in wonderland it's a bit you know those kind of movies but like instead of being like disneyed up it is just that dark version except with a more kind of artistic sensibility around it if you've yes. seen I, the lobster it is the same director uh folks yeah. at home I think, and that's all I knew going into it. All I knew is Emma Stone was in it and the Lobster director. That's all I knew. Um, I think uh, there's something really important for me personally. I don't know if everyone shows, but like, I just need it. I need something weird. I need it weird. I don't want hyper realistic. I don't. I don't like war stuff. I don't like. Like, I can't even bring myself to watch Oppenheimer. I just can't. I can't t- swallow that pill. I just like can't do it. I'm sure it's gonna win Best Picture, or whatever. But I like. I don't. I can't do it. I just. I can't. My body, my mind, my whole being, just. And again, I'm obviously like blocking it out, but I just don't want to feel it. I was in the same you know I mean? boat, Jeff. I was in the same boat, but then who, I who tied you down and made you watch this movie? COVID then? did. COVID oh, okay, tied me right. down, and then I watched him sloppy oppy. And let me tell you, Killian yeah. Murphy, him and his beautiful eyeballs, I would have followed him to hell and back. Oh, man. I guess I got to watch it. Mm. I, Oppen- it. Oppenheim's great. You should just do the Bobby Oppenheim thing. I did watch Barbie, though. I enjoyed Barbie a great deal. You watched Barbie, but you didn't watch the companion movie Oppenheimer? It's not the companion movie. Just because they were... That's, that's a, that's, you're just falling into the pocket of big film. That's what, that's what, that's what that is. You're I mean, you got to follow that uh, marketing uh, double feature with the second one that came out, Saw Patrol. Watch Saw 9 and then Paw Patrol. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. pretty yeah. sick. I, I'm into that. Uh, I'm a fan. I, I just heard they're making 28 years later or whatever they're going to call yeah. it, the sequel well, to the zombie stuff. Yeah. I went in on this actually. <laughs> I went in on this actually uh, last night because I, I was reading it. Apparently, this is something they've been like trying to make happen for a sec. Um, and the most chilling part is you're like, oh, yeah, that first movie is six years away or so from being 28 years since that movie came oh, out. Oh, wow. Isn't that wacky? I was, yeah, I guess, I, in, I guess it's what, 22, 23 years old, something like that? I yeah, think it's yeah, 2002, yeah. if I'm remembering yeah. correctly. Um, that movie also is Rules. still spectacular. Like, mm-hmm. You go back and like, I was just, because uh, I was watching, I love those, um, around these times, I love those round tables when the actors love them. talk, like all the people who were like, obviously getting nominated for an Oscar this year, they like talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, and I remember Killian Murphy and like one of these YouTube videos was talking about how, um, how wild that one shot is that they were able to get fully over uh, the bridge in, mm-hmm. in London. Forgive me for not knowing the name of the bridge offhand, but like with the, with the bus overturned, they were like, we just like, wouldn't have been able to do that anymore. Like they sure. like, wouldn't have let us like do this. And it's crazy. It's real. Ah, like it's, it's cool. They did it. I just cool. want to see another D Boyle film, y'all. Yeah, I know. Sure. I know. Like the, you know? What, yeah. the is his last feature really yesterday? I think it's that. Yeah. Okay. IMDb says his last film was yesterday, where uh, the Beatles didn't exist. Do y'all see that? Right. That shit. Was oh wild. my god! Oh. He did that movie. Yeah. yeah. I thought you meant the last film was released yesterday <laughs> i was like what? no <laughs> i was like damn he relax it's, he's got me <laughs> yeah that was him that. that's that interesting that's that's interesting and i think i'll leave it at that uh hey he directed the good steve jobs movie oh yeah yeah, yeah. i love sunshine i think sunshine's dope um all right. If you haven't been able to tell already, this is a call-in show. Uh, <laughs> 707 Exit Flu is our phone number. I really could go on a movie uh, bender right now with everyone. I've just been soaked up in it. And the fact that... We've got to start, we've got to start a movie review podcast. I guess so, right? And look, let me tell I you. I have been I, saying I, this... Jan's been saying... Exactly, yeah. Jan's been saying this for well, so it's, long. It's, look, if, if for your consideration season in my house is a very advantageous place to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're not dealing with discs anymore, which makes it even better. 
Uh, I so, did have to break that to my mom and dad literally mm, yesterday. I said, mm. "Mom, Dad, I do need you to know I'm not getting the DVDs anymore. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'm so no. sorry." And uh, sucks. Sucks. My, you know, my Look. mom watched Past Lives last night and sent me a very sweet text message because I recommended it to her, and I was like, "You're gonna cry. I just, it's important you know." In fact, actually, if anybody is listening, go on uh, one Dan Reichert's Twitter. If you'd like to see pictures of me that I sent to him while actively hysterically crying. Oh, I've seen uh, that. Yeah. I do end, like I will, that you send him cry photos. I think. Well, because he doesn't. I just like to remind him that people feel. Yeah. And, so oh, I send is him that why? Yeah. He's was, doing was, like the Lord's work. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we still got to we'll talk about one more movie, though. Like y'all y'all okay. like Past Lives? Past Lives fucked me up. I didn't see it. I, I think it's stunning. I think I've it's not really seen it amazing. yet. If you have yeah, ever it's... had a childhood uh, crush or like a long term friend or whatever, don't fucking watch it. And if you've lost connection <laughs> with them, don't fucking watch it. Oh, is this like a what if movie? Ah, uh, not. Uh, I would like not to entirely. It's okay. Okay. It's it's one of those things where like it is so. I'm about to put this movie over so hard. It's it's one of those things where like the the master the mastery of it is that it is a hyper specific situation between three people that's going on and yet they've done it in such a way that every living person can project something onto huh. this hmm. and just generally what the movie is about it's about this um forgive me please if i'm pronouncing it incorrectly um this korean thing called inyon which yep. is like this idea that like in every life everyone you've interacted with in this life was something to you in all of your past lives. And so it's Whoa. this idea that it's just this idea that like the cashier at the store in one of your infinite lives maybe was your husband or something. And like why we feel these connections toward people and it, it's going to fuck you up. It's really beautiful. Really beautiful. Wow. That's a yeah. hell of an endorsement. Yeah. And if it's you a, a master. No, it's going to. It's going to pull it out of you. It's, oh. And it's a masterwork in showing and not telling, which I think is like, again, like so hard to do. It's, but it's like the number one rule of like yeah, writing first rule, is, yeah. is to show and not tell, but it's hard. And this movie, the way that they're confident enough to just like hang on somebody's face for like an actual 30 seconds and like for you to go on, ev you feel all of it. Yeah, I go. You should watch Past Lives like tonight and text me, Al Alex. The the oh. line where uh the the childhood best friend it's in the it's one of the bar scenes when he looks over to uh Greta what I forget Greta Lee the, Greta Lee is the actor yeah uh, mm -hmm. when when he looks at her and says the line about the husband and just like oh shit okay it's Ooh. not gonna go where I wanted to go but okay all right I understand. yeah but how do you want it to go man I mean. How do you want yeah, it to go, right? Because, like, you know, you could easily look at the husband and be like, "He's not a bad." So dude. this is all right. We're we're gonna show, we're gonna answer a voicemail in ten seconds. Uh, I work here now, and I get to make these calls. <laughs> but I, I, the, I just, I want to button that with. I was reading an interview with the filmmakers of this thing, and, um, you know, what, what the director said is she was like. Yeah, but how much more simple would the situation be if this husband was an asshole? Yeah. He's a good man. Like, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody in this situation is overwhelmingly trying their best. And I, um, that is, that is, they said, uh, she said, drama frequently comes from children, or for, forgive me, drama comes from adults acting like children. What happens if everybody here is acting like an adult? <laughs> and they're like, huh. what? Yeah. It's, it's. It's yeah. Ooh, if you've ever seen In the Mood for Love, it's it's a lot like that. Uh dude, are, I think movies are back. Movies are I, unbelievable. I genuinely think we should do a movie review podcast. But so I, just, I, just, I can be invited to screeners, please. I, yeah. I also as a like I really want to watch more movies this year and I feel like this will be a good way to do it. Like if uh, what if we turned our passions into work? I definitely recommend it. It's definitely not going to leave you in a constant state of mm -hmm. only, and it's definitely mm -hmm. not going to cause existential problems for you. Oh, cool. I, the, all of yeah. those things sound attractive. Yeah. <laughs> I man, I'm just telling you. Like now, look, I'm a I'm 41, so I watch movies in two settings normally. Now, sure, that's what I do. That's fine. Because I have a partner who falls asleep like a fucking child. Okay. Okay. Jeff. On the couch. Jeff. Talking about Dylan. 
No, my <laughs> my wife. My wife. My wife. Can I present to you something? Get the Meta Quest Three, and just sit there and watch <laughs> a movie. Jan, I can't join you on this freakish journey. It's I not a freakish journey unless I'm you also do you. it. I'm Yo, gonna join you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Y'all know tell how me. much of a mark I am for Wes Anderson. I didn't yeah. really like Asteroid City when I sat down yeah. to watch it for a little bit. Yeah. I booted back up in VR, bought all the way fucking in. No way, <laughs> dude. VR is not saving Asteroid City. But I was there. It was blasted at my face, and I was just like, "Damn, look at these tight ninety degree angles." I oh, know. Look. Shit. Look at that All tracking shot. All the movies are shot. fun to look at. That's like, a nice without a doubt. That's that's a nice set. Wow, look at him, man, Jason Schwartzman. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, it makes me think of that scene in the Social Network where Andrew Garfield realizes what is happening to him and he storms into the Facebook office and he's like, "Mark," and everyone's like, "No, you can't. He's jacked in," or whatever they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, as he's like coding, that's going to be you. Your partner's going to walk in. Like a, a family member's going to come. Like, no, no, no. Jan is jacked in, and you're just like <laughs> watching Godzilla in VR. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Godzilla in VR! Oh my God! Any of them? <laughs> Any Why of are them? we having all of these thoughts for the first time? I don't understand. Backler, you uh, gotta watch a 3D movie in VR. Alita no, Battle no, Angel I, is a fucking no, I, masterpiece. Okay. All right, I'm I'm off. I'm, I'm off yeah, now. Yeah, listen, it is <laughs> absolutely Tam's gorgeous, leaving. especially yeah. when you're watching it in a fake movie theater <laughs> with people throwing fake popcorn popcorn at you and talking about Christianity because somehow that. <laughs> in, in that specific app people are always talking about Christianity I'll, <laughs> I'll see that in 4D please what, That's what, what app like is it John? it's like a big screen or something big screen beta you know yeah I, I, I've heard about that <laughs> listen I'm a big screen alpha I don't go no big screen betas okay <laughs> thank you very much Um, what are they going to do with the social network like I feel like that movie just is completely irrelevant now. Like, I just think it's just sort of like time capsule, right? Yeah, like it's, it's a time like, capsule, right? It's, it's just, just it, telling it's yeah. telling a very specific story about something as it was when the movie was made. Like, it's right. like you can make of the social network too. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, without cover, a doubt, you can make a, you know, a whole a whole season. I think. I mean, uh, I surely surely you just like move to the story of another failed social network. Like, I don't it, know, it, it, Twitter. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought you were frozen for a second, but yes. Uh, all right. Wow. Look, we did we did a good amount of uh, movie chat. I, I had a great time. Jan. Movie you, review podcast coming soon, everyone. If there's somehow any juice left to squeeze and we get some kind of movie podcast out of this, like, my God. There is no time for one. Let me tell yeah, you. I'm <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm doing the mental calendar. I don't know when the fuck we would do that. No. Of course not. Of course not. We're I'm already on borrowed time. We'd have to kill Revengeance and make it something else. No, we'd have to kill someone. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Like I said, call in show. Isn't it obvious? 707 Exit Flu is our phone number. We're going to get to uh, as many voicemails as we can possibly handle in the next I don't know what that we've got in this show. Uh, leading things off, special guest, Alex, take it away. Right. Please forgive me. What do I click to see them again? <laughs> that little chat bubble in the top right of your uh, video screen. Sick. Got it. Thank you. There you go. All the way uh, to the bottom. Let's do... Uh... Still hurts. Okay. Hey, 3M boys. This is uh, Oshiro from Japan. Uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine said that uh, she was seeing a guy who she described as a power top which I then responded with, oh, so you're going out with a Beyblade. And I got no reaction. It still hurts. Mm. Thank you very much, guys. See you. Bye, bye. Thank you, Cole. I think I understand this. I Thank definitely you, understand yeah. this. Yeah. It's, it's, a solid, it's a solid joke. It's a, it's so, a great I think joke. You, I think you deserved the laugh. I don't think you should let it bring you down in the way it seems to have done. I think it's time to move beyond the joke and find new jokes to disappoint people with. Yeah, like aim aim lower, right? Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. got to be like the main character from the first season of Beyblade and just let it rip. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. See, I only, uh, but I'm able to understand this just because I know the toys so well because I have a, a, a child. Uh, who went through a Beyblade phase in a big way and wanted the Supreme Joker uh, Excalibur uh, rival top 
piece that I paid thirty dollars for once. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. I mean, I think I still know where it is. Uh, they're fun. They're fun. We play with them every now and then. Uh, I didn't realize it was actually like an anime or something as well. <laughs> Yo, yeah. the anime I, goes places. I'm sure. I uh, I feel like this is a decent time. I don't know if I've ever said this on Giant Bomb programming, but I'm, it's well documented. My first ever uh, voiceover job that I got, I think I was like 18 or 19, was for a Beyblade commercial. And so if you look, you will, I remember the the direction I was given was like, we're look, like a teenage Batman kind of sound. And I still remember some of the lines and I will give you two of them right here, right now. Yes. And it was, yes. it was like, it was like, I have power. I have speed. Like it was like so crazy. And like when you video- say that, I feel like I've seen this advert. <laughs> no, a hundred percent, dude. And it was like a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of like tweens, like in an out al- in a dark alley, like <laughs> ripping the Beyblades with each other. And I, I remember I saw it for the first time, and I was like, sick, dude. Those kids are cool. <laughs> wow. It was for wow. like ninja. I think they were like n- ninja adjacent. Beyblades. I don't know. I'll find it for you and I'll make sure you get it in your hands. But nice. And you got a lifetime supply of Beyblades, right? Like that was the payment. That was what you took. Sure. Someone Uh, uploaded this to YouTube seven uh, seven years ago. uh, The specific commercial. They just you found it it pretty easy. Oh no! Someone dropped it in the chat. It's called Alex so Boniello colon voiceover commercial for no Beyblade. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, like, can we play this? Visible. Can we play this, Chad? Can well, we? Like, can you? Can I? Wait, wait. What chat is this in? We do have to pay Alex wait, in the giant on. bomb chat, Alex. No, this was long enough ago that I don't think I was union yet. If that makes you feel better, so I'm sure I got paid nothing. And that's, you, where is it? Oh yeah, this is the exact voice you just did. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. Oh man, Jen. Okay, hold on. Did... Let me let me figure out uh, let me route this oh, down. Oh, sick. Okay. I'm actually I'm glad this person uploaded this. How this fun. was 7 years ago. No, it wasn't. It was way more than it was no, more no. than 7 years ago. No, no. no. The this was, video yeah. was uploaded 7 yeah, years ago. Right, okay. Right. I yeah. like I like that the description is written as if this person knows you. It's the well, Alex did actually, a voiceover for a Beyblade I can, commercial. <laughs> I can actually specifically once again say something say something nice about the per this I know this account. This is a person my first Broadway show uh had half the cast was deaf. So what this person oh. dedicated themselves to doing was like uploading anything related to people in the show or like oh. work they were doing and would just caption everything. Oh because this was actually a rad thing this person did, but I do love that yeah i love this yeah. specific yes <laughs> it's, it's, it's this is pretty name. sick i like that yeah dude this song is good i am a bay warrior <laughs> come on <laughs> a spirit stirs inside ready to strike <laughs> down my opponents i have power there it is I have speed i have there a warrior it is. within ready to be unleashed <laughs> Me and this too, warrior Alex. spirit takes on a new form with new bay warriors what the fuck are these whoa look at these guys warrior, and now i'm ready to conquer the competition whoa that hand motion was interesting oh, his face makes look ridiculous this is my warrior Holy shit. I am a Bay Warrior. Come on. New show Steel Bay Warriors. Download this music track free for limited time only at BeybladeBattles.com. Oh, I hope it's no. still there. And take the battle with you on the free mobile app. Ask a parent to go online. Bay Was it BeybladeBattles.com? Let it rip. Do you, oh, you remember man. the URL? No the website's way. down. The website's down. No, this is so sick, Alex. That, that song legitimately goes harder than I remember. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa!" They they do the thing it like at the climax of that song that they do in rap sometimes, where the rapper is like running out of breath and he's like pushing out every single word because it needs to be said. Yeah, and every yeah. word needed to be said. That's right. So so this so you're how old when you did this? I gotta guess like 19 or so. Wow. Yeah. I I. I don't really, 18, 19, no, maybe like 21 even. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Damn. That's fun. A little trip down memory lane for you, bud. <laughs> Damn. I just like how easy it was to find. Hell yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Sir 5000 just Googled Alex Boniello Beyblades and it popped up. Yeah, it's, oh, that's I that. That'll, that'll get it for you. Every, you know, everything's digital now. That's the thing. Yeah. Is what is what happens. Well, what a fantastic coincidence! Thank you for choosing your future there with that voicemail, Alex. Well yeah. played. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, thank you, caller. We'll go to Jan Ochoa for the next voicemail. I don't think we should do any more voicemails after that. I know we kind of peaked. <laughs> um, uh, this is related to me. Japanese robot cop. Oops. On the gram. Right. Dumpers. I was just on the gram, and I saw a reel for a, a 1970s or 80s Japanese tokusatsu show called Special Police Robo Jam Person. Have you heard of no. this? He's like a purple robo cop, but he's got a badge on his hand and a, and a gun and a matching purple car. Anyway, his name is Jam Person. And I just thought James should know about the Japanese robot cop that's named after him. Anyways, I love you. Goodbye. Thank you, caller. It looks like a Power Ranger. Yeah, it is within that same realm of uh, uh, tokusatsu style shows like Common Rider, Kamen Rider. I'm sorry, Matt Shipman. I always mispronounce it. Uh, but yeah, Jan Person. There's a, a specific screenshot that when I first started here at this website... Someone sent me, it was just a caption of Jan person is filled with anxiety. Um, <laughs> and then I, I thought like they I've were making that. fun of me. Yeah, but no, yeah. Like just honoring you, you and your month. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, what, what better time, right? There's, there's RoboCop, Robo Mitch, and just Jan person. I've seen an episode. Uh, someone threw a car at Jan person in the first episode, I think. It was great. Cool. Everyone's got robo like all robo personalities. I would like one, please. Uh can we all can we hand those out? Uh I'll I'll wait for next week, perhaps. That's your deadline. Get a Tam robot. Uh yeah, I want a robot. A Bonnie Yellow bot. <laughs> we'll be all set, baby. It's pretty good. Well, I mean, you do have uh what's his face from uh Flintstones. Oh, you mean the the caveman boss who's not a robot? You mean that guy? If you think about it, he could probably outlast a robot, given the grand scheme of things. You mean you mean slate bot? Yeah, yeah. I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> um, Tam, it's your turn to pick a voicemail, buddy. Hmm. I would like Psalms. Okay. You sit there listening to your voicemails and thumping your Bibles, talking about Psalms, talking about John 316. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. Also, uh, if any game series could get the Atari 50 treatment or, like, game, what would you pick? Thanks, guys. Mm. Mm. It was quite a pivot. Very really good voice. Good. Very good. Yeah, really Solid good. impression. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Um, what game series get the Atari Fifty Three Man? Shinobi. Oh, okay. that's nice. Yeah, I want to see all the that's Shinobi. Pretty good. M uh, maybe the uh, yeah, you know, I'll throw in the PS Two ones. What about Streets of Rage? Streets of Rage hasn't had something like that. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't have an answer for this because I I'm not sure. I understand the question. <laughs> Atari well, 50 like, was like a... Yeah. It was like the museum thing? Yeah. 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 Got it. So NHL like 94. Uh, mm, I don't know how much I want to relitigate all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all. That's the short answer. Uh, and then Danny made a video last year, you know. Yeah. That's, that's good enough, I think. And... I that's the thing. It's tough. I'm, I'm finding anything that I would be pulled to be like really interested in is like so much of it is so well documented already. You know what I mean? Like there are so many like you just go on YouTube. There's so many like pretty spectacular, even like fan made documentaries about because there's so much like lore and stuff. But I don't know. It, it also makes me think about I used to love. Um, I remember playing through the entire I want to say it was Half-Life 2 campaign with the little commentary bubbles. You remember that stuff? Yeah, that, like, was that cool. stuff was cool. I really 
it's not the same, but I, I, I did love that stuff. I thought it was that's dope. I, I do think that's really cool stuff. I would like that for something like Alan Wake 2 or the original yeah. Pokemon games, actually. Now that I think about it, if uh, to think about how they were devising the map of Kanto and everything, yeah, that's, that'd that's be cool. Right. Yeah, I almost so so. Was it like pop up video for the Atari thing, or was it just like because I, 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 I've never seen it? Uh, I don't know what it I is. I think it's a mixture of all of it. Like, you had like text slides and like um, audio, and then video would show as well. Then you could play the game and that kind of stuff. Because I would love to have that DVD commentary experience, yeah, on top of some of my all timers, you know? Yeah, I, if, I would go on. No, I was gonna say, if we're doing that, then like, you gotta throw me like, you know, Bioshock one and two. I think. I that's a good one actually. I, I was gonna say like, Final Fantasy could be really interesting, just because of the journey it's gone on. And you could even like, if you wanted to broaden it out, maybe just do like Square and mm. Enix, and have like the Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest running concurrently, and then combining it and see what happens. I really like this idea. Like, I, I, I mean, I just maybe should watch some of Atari Fifty just to see how it's constructed, right? How it's presented. We should it's do that with the cool. podcasts. We should do that with the dump truck. Go back to an episode of the dump truck and then have Dude, director's commentary. We were gonna do that for oh, something. Yeah. Were we gonna do that for yeah, something? Yeah. We were gonna do that for back to school. Oh, that's right. We were we were gonna like go back back. We're, yeah, yeah. You and Dan, just, we're gonna pull the green screens back out and see how much. <laughs> Uh, information gonna... Dan retained. Right, right, right. And then, and then we were like, has there been anything? And it was just crickets from Dan. And I was like, well, this won't work. This he can't. did buy a telescope, though, because of the show. That's true. Small victories. Um, all right. Thank you, caller. Uh, it's my turn. And uh, I'm going to uh, choose grown or owned. Hi, 3AM, boys. Uh, on the bomb cast you were talking about, the Rockefeller Christmas tree, which um, actually came from the area I'm near in the southern tier of New York this year. Mm -hmm. Not only did it come from an area near me, another random fact is it was uh, apparently grown or owned by the drummer from the gym class heroes. So, Jan, you might enjoy that. Also, fuck Albany. So we not the I, fuck Albany, but that's so wait, weird, what, right? What do you say? What Christmas tree? The Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Center. Uh, I heard, tree. I, I heard Baklava okay. Christmas tree, and I was like, "What the fuck? Yeah. That sounds amazing." Yeah, the Greek dessert Christmas tree. Uh, no, is like, Greek Greek baklava isn't Greek, is it? I thought it was Turkish. No yeah, I thought it was Turkish. Fucking, what's going I on? I always here? get it confused with the face covering. That's a, yeah. a balaclava. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it yeah, was a it's... popular popular sweet amongst the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, Turkish. So, Fuck Turkish, off, Greeks. Turkish. Oh, I'm so that I, shit from there. I got the second one. I got it on the second try. <laughs> Relax, <laughs> bud. I, I and I'm the 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 one with the uh, I shit you not Turkish an ancestry. So, all right, every every white dude thinks they've got a bit of color in them. Carry on. Look, it's very clear I do not, but uh, from a DNA perspective, it's uh, it is fact. Uh, yeah, that's, fair. that's fair. I did have to text Dan after uh, m my name was in y'all's mouth recently <laughs> about uh, about, about specific, like Dan having no idea that I was Italian, and I texted him and I Alex? said, "Well, I did text him and I say, Dan, it's incredibly probable that I'm actually the most Italian person you know." Because uh, I, I recently did do one of those tests, and it's ninety eight percent Italian, and then the other here he is. Would you assume that I'm Belgian? Maybe. No, but it's believable. Yeah, like, yeah, like no, sure. but right. it's believable that Boniello is Italian. I hope you no, recorded well, we your track before you popped in. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't better recorded this track. Oh <laughs> right, we do that now. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Bye. All right. The, the uh, problem with, with Dan's logic is that A, he has none, and B, he, he just like, he tries to make this false equivalency, which is obviously the wait, whole point the, of this. Was the issue he didn't know? He didn't know Vinny Caravelle yeah, was he didn't know, Italian. Didn't know Vinny, he didn't know Vinny was Italian. Yeah, right? and then he asked, or is Vinny, Alex? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what do you think, man? I, I feel like he doesn't, at times he doesn't like look, be, like I would, like Alex, I assumed you were Italian because sure. of your surname. 
Like I was sure, like, oh, okay, that's a very Italian name. But yeah. I just, I'm like, Vinny Caravella, I was like, yeah, that's an Italian name, probably yeah, Italian. And then when it's confirmed, Dan just is like, no, I don't. It does not give any credence to like origins of names or anything like that. That's what yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess I just like, Dan has seen my family. Of course. So I was like, <laughs> how, how do you not know? Yes, <laughs> Alex Boniello from New Jersey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Irish. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I guess that could have been the second one. Uh, yeah, it's it's mind blowing. My truly mind blowing. Thanks for defending yourself, Dan. You you really proved the point. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in and defending yourself, and <laughs> no one will hear it. Did a bang up job. <laughs> Chat is up next. Chat shows Mars Media. Hey, bomb crew. This is Brian from Michigan, driving through the wonderful snow that we have up here right now. Uh, nice. Question for you. When all of the billionaires go to Mars, what are they going to listen to and what kind of media are they going to consume? Will they consume Earth media or will they bring people to make their own Mars media like a bunch of jesters and puppeteers like Kings Absolutely of Yore? Um, I don't know. Rich Here's, assholes. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. In hell. Here's the thing, right? The problem with billionaires is, one, they're billionaires. They've got way too much money. They don't get taxed enough. Tax billionaires to fuck. Um, secondly, billionaires are convinced that they're capable of doing creative things that they're clearly incapable of doing. So I think they would, with confidence, all go to Mars and be like, we will make the movies. Yeah. And we will make the music. And we will make the art. And it is going to be a fucking catastrophe over there. And we will laugh at them from a distance. And it will be great. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, billionaires think they can relate to the common person, and they cannot. They're they going to get are, a, er, They will get a handful of stand-up comedians, though, and go, and then uh, just riff on Mars life, and it'll just all be terrible. It will be the worst comedians <laughs> that currently right now. Jeff oh, Dunham. They're going to be over there, and they're going to be using like AI to make their art. And it's just going to be the most depressing shit they've ever seen. As if Mars doesn't have it hard enough. Yeah, they got AI billionaires there. As if Mars already have doesn't you? get such a bad rap. I hate to, I hate to bring this up. Have you seen the little like? Did you see the Elon Musk uh, new X logo thing that he posted? No, no. no. Oh, it's so funny. Is he like created like a new boot up splash screen for um, uh, Twitter X? It is. Genuinely, it is like it's like the splash screen for a '90s era graphics card. Where what, do like gotta, a, what do I got? Yeah, like what a, do I got? Someone, here? someone <laughs> will find it. Someone will find it and put it in chat. If you're out there in chat, it's like a panther running, but it's like a purple panther, and then it like like slashes the screen and it turns into an X. It like it looks I so have, fucking. What what you're saying sounds rad but i'm sure it, no it's no not. yeah 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 it I is think. it is like a a fucking how, how does somebody achieve the ability of being so deeply uncool interesting people i'm not are, sure people are in fact saying that this is actually a st stock it's stock oh, no video way. footage that he then just put the x on at the end Oh my! That yeah, is correct. even better. Who, I yeah, think correct. I think I found it. Who, who the yeah. fuck? What the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> what? what? Why? I don't get it. <laughs> that is the art they're going to be making on Mars. But what is this? Like, what? Who? Who? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Man, that's See, this is a perfect <laughs> example of a billionaire thinking they have creative uh, talent. And then making this and being like, I did it. And everyone has been like, this is the worst thing ever created. Please stop. Man, oh. I was, I just bought that stock footage. That was going to be the new Bombcast intro. intro. Shit. <laughs> Damn it. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Jan, if you can find that, find that stock footage and then put the bomb but, at the end. Yeah, let's, just, the X, let's just buy and, it. Like, and yeah. tweet it out. Tweet it out. That will yeah. bang. That will do yeah. so well. <laughs> what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Uh, I, oh. I I found it. I found the template. Mm. Oh yes, do it, Jan. Please, I'm begging you. Oh my god, this <laughs> looks so fucking terrible. This Jan, is for put e the bomb at the end. Okay, this put is the bomb free. at the end. Put the bomb oh. at the end and tweet it out. It'll be done before it's his time to thing. choose a voicemail. If we do it, if we do it, like we need, we need to ratio Elon with it. 
So we need higher retweets and likes on it than he has on his one. So we everyone got this. that. Everyone yeah, got so that. So make sure you get your bots ready. Get everyone ready to retweet it, and then we'll be like, "You got ratioed by a video game site." You got that, Boniello? You're gonna send your minions? No, no, <laughs> no? okay, no, no, he's not on board. I thought we had him. He's not on board. No, I get it. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably for the you know. best. He's smart. He's 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 trained. He's he doing the, the responsible right thing and ensuring. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, a, he's, he's the only adult in the room. His, his minions don't go on Twitter. Yeah, 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 smart move, Alex. We all should follow your footsteps. Um. Yeah. All right. Speaking of which, uh, let's let's have you pick the next one. Oh sure. Uh, um, I, I'm gonna say Dan was right again. Unfortunately, I'm just what curious what he was right about. Numbers. I got bad news. Dan was right again. Uh, Robert De Niro, only a quarter Italian. His dad's half Italian, half Irish. His mom's like German, French, Dutch, and English, or something like that. Oh. Sorry, Minotti. Hi. No, he's still Italian. No, yeah, that's not still... how this works. You know, we don't give him points. He doesn't get points for that. He's not right. Well, well, he's so that... still Italian. You know, exactly. Italian. Like, yeah. I'm not saying he's only Italian. Who is only? You know, very few people are only right. At some, you go far back enough. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What are we doing? I'm, here's what I'll say. I'm gonna uh, impartial again. You know, I, I don't. No, I don't work here, are you? So I can are you say, impartial? Are you impartial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are I don't impartial? work here, so I can be reasonable. He's accidentally <sighs> made. You know what I mean? He didn't. He didn't like. He's accidentally right. You know, like he's he's incidentally correct. Oh, sure. Techn he so, is technicality Riker. Like that is right. it. Yeah. That's yeah. what he's got, right? Right. It's got to be. Yeah, someone in the chat says he's right for the wrong reasons. And, and exactly. you know, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. I mean, it should be the title of his next book, right? I, 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 I actually, Dan, that's the <laughs> find out who put that in the chat. And get my, <laughs> right for the wrong reasons. The Dan Reichert story. I, I actually <laughs> enjoy it when Dan is right. So I, I'm, I'm on board. Yeah, with this. but you just are Mr. Chaos in a way. You, you want to see no, the world I burn like a little bit. I like when Dan uh, is correct about things because it shows growth. It shows knowledge that, you know, he has that others don't. And I respect it. Okay. You yeah. clearly just want something. So from him, I just, I know the long con. I've been around the block what? before here. I know what you're up to, Tam. And I won't stand for it. Uh, I won't stand for this collusion. Jan, if you're not done editing the video Please that I me. clearly see you working on. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, he's absolutely <laughs> you're absolutely locked and loaded. Are, and has, like, has it rendered out? Like, what's going our, on? Our video feed died for like, I don't know, 15 seconds and came back. And I'm oh, only really? assuming that that's because he opened some <laughs> sort of... You open software. Like, you want us to <laughs> skip you? Would that be good? Should we yeah. come back around? Please, please skip me. All right. All right, Tam. We'll oh my God! Next to... he, okay, hold on. <laughs> M fucking dumbass Elon got rid of whatever cool uh, Luma fade they got going on here, and just put on a bunch of weird camera sparkles. Okay, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> God, I, uh, it, uh, I would like to have uh, you were aware. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dumpers? I just wanted to let you know that there's a government website at gsa.gov that they're selling decommissioned lighthouses. And there's one upcoming in Cleveland, Ohio. It's called the Cleveland Harbor West Pier Head Light. So if uh, Giant Bomb wants to go in on that lighthouse, I just wanted to make sure you were aware. Yep. That would be sick. We could yeah. change we could change the bulb to like project the bomb. <laughs> Oh, well, they're decommissioned. We can't recommission it. Yeah, let's recommission it. Can you do that? Can you like start up a defunct lighthouse? I feel like that'd be like some maritime illegality or something. I mean, we're only helping. Does the lighthouse ever like do damage to people? I don't know. Lighthouses are fundamentally a good on this world. Like they help Wait, people. So you got I feel any like boaters? Any boaters here? Boat people? Uh. <laughs> I like being on a boat sometimes, but I get seasick, so not too much. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same. 
I, well, I don't get sick. I just, I like being on boats, but like boat responsibilities seem terrible. Like I don't want yeah. anything to do with like docking and anchoring and like all that bullshit and like the bow and starp, all that stuff sounds miserable. Uh, I just want to be a passenger on a boat. Man, I when I was in school, they made us take sailing, which was... Uh, it's so cool. <laughs> dude, it is not cool when you have to, like, when... It, you're basically... Sailing as a teenager is you just learning how to not get, like, wet. The, you're, you're doing it purely to avoid being in the water. So you're like, oh, i got to turn this and do this, and why am I doing this? Not because I enjoy it, I just don't want to get wet. So it's like, okay. Yeah. And let I me tell heard... you, I capsized multiple boats for funsies. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fun. Well, it was a good time. I'm glad you grew out of it. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I, <laughs> you're like eh, maybe. Um, I uh, something I had read. I think it was on like Reddit or something recently. It was like a uh, what's like a financial thing that a rich person once told you or, or something. So that was like some sort yeah, of question yeah. like that. And uh, they they said always if you want a boat, just have the license and and rent them when you want them. It's like just overall gonna cost you so much less money. Because most people who own a boat don't take the boat out enough to justify the wild expenditure of maintaining uh, a boat. I don't know. I'm I, I'm in no risk of owning a boat, but isn't boat ownership just a flex? Uh no. I, like I, I have a close friend who owns a fairly large boat, and he and he uses it all the time in the summer. And like it's yes, a lot of boating is flexing. All these pricks just you know pissing yeah. contesting with the size of their engines and stuff and. You get some of these wackadoos with like the speedboat thing. Like it's a whole culture that is really deeply uninteresting. Um, but I also really like being out on it when it's just sort of casual, you know. And and I think it's that part of it is clearly, you know, you're not a flexing. I think you're I think you're you're um you're sort of like uh intuition is correct though, Tam. I do think a lot of people do that for that reason though. I thought boats were to flex and if you needed a kind of way to murder someone oh just to like get rid of a body yeah yeah that seems like the person i would talk to first yeah okay you cool. know it's happened on television quite a lot yeah, yeah. you know it's it's something with a boat yeah but yeah I, I i do think that we should get a lighthouse okay it's pretty cool actually <laughs> like all the jokes aside uh, maybe not in this moment but like everybody listening should actually go to that website and look at it it's fascinating yeah, yeah. To, like buy federal we could, property. Yeah, we could like set up a twenty four hour live stream of the the lighthouse, and have like our our streams be like us running the lighthouse, and, and we just play Bioshock and yeah, uh, that is and it, the, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. We should just take turns doing Willem Dafoe's monologue uh, from the nice. movie The Lighthouse. <gasps> Why like you that. spill the beans? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. All right. Uh I'm going to go next. Thank you caller. Let's do ba 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 ba. Ooh, these none of these are really speaking to me. Uh Post Malone or I'm assuming that says Rage Against the Machine. Hey guys. I recently replayed Cyberpunk. Johnny Silverhand is the lead singer of a band. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and a, it's, it's a band that dropped a nuke, a, nu a nuclear explosive device uh, yeah. on a corporation in the middle of a city. Based. And I'm trying to imagine a current day scenario where a band drops a nuke on a mm -hmm. building. What what band would that be? To, yeah. <laughs> it's either going to be... Uh, Post Malone or Rage Against the Machine. What? Let me Why just say post? something before before we even get to this. When we see these when we see the titles of the <laughs> of the fucking file name, right? We see the file name. We're like, all right, well, never in a million years would I have guessed that this is how we arrive at Post Malone or Rage Against the Machine. I, I think this is one of the best voicemails I've ever heard. So in the <laughs> spirit in the spirit of uh, baiting and switching, well done, caller, and well done, Jan, because you named the voicemail. Um. Look, 
I think we can, <laughs> I think we can like suspend our disbelief a little bit and ignore and, and step aside the fact that like nuclear warfare is horrific and should never ever happen. And like whatever it is, unless we're nuking a different planet in outer space, fine. <laughs> or an asteroid that's hurling towards Even Earth. Even then, why, uh, yeah, okay, an asteroid okay. hurting, yeah, okay. Right? Like, leave it to the Armageddon team to do that. Um, on this planet, no thank you. But, to play along with the uh, thought experiment, uh, what band would it be? There is a clear answer. It's not a band, it's an artist. Singular artist. It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> Like why one has she, million percent, it is Taylor Swift. Wh- why has she? Uh, why has she been pushed to this limit? Why has she decided that nuclear warfare is the only option? So because of Selena Gomez. I say now, everything I <laughs> wait. Yeah. What? Wait, is there uh, Selena Gomez? What? That? No, what? it's fine. I. Uh. <laughs> Alec no. Alex knows why. Oh, is there like beef? Oh, is there like no, weird beef with them? No, don't. Do don't, it. Don't. Don't. It's don't, fine. That's very New Jersey of you. Um, don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah, no, dude, you can't do it, dude. Yeah. I, I, don't. I feel like the, I, everything I'm about to say, I say with the crippling fear of the Taylor Swift fan base. So oh, I sure. Do not they're, mean, they're, they're I do scary. not mean any harm to you. I... I I have nothing but respect for whatever you've got going on that makes you behave the way you do, but enjoy it. What I'm saying is Taylor Swift is constantly doing things that is designed to ignite passion in her fans. Like as most of the times it's like, you know, Oh, uh, I'm not in love with this guy anymore. Fuck him. He's uh, a letter from my past or some nonsense like that. Um, And they go mad over it. I feel like as time goes by, she will need to come up with new and innovative ways of igniting that passion and mobilizing that fan base. I feel like it's only a matter of time before it becomes anti-capitalism and then anti-corporation. And before you know it, I think we will have a situation in the same way that Donald Trump accidentally made January 6th happen. We're going to have Taylor Swift accidentally make her fan base nuke uh it's it's gonna be like fight club it's gonna be the end of fight club i'll take you one step further tam i'm on board with this a thousand fucking percent because guess what guess who turns 35 just in time to be inaugurated as the next president of the united states of america because i sure as shit don't feel good about voting for any of these motherfuckers but i would vote for goddamn taylor swift i would vote for taylor swift in a heartbeat in a heartbeat and that's literally what's separating her her from being president i'm t- dude she will be 35 this december i think you could still run is it like you have to be 35 when you're sworn in <laughs> everyone alex is just having a meltdown like, the what? Alex, you, what, know, you think you just, what's what, just, what's the problem here alex doesn't from need mo- to catch a stray right now guys <laughs> from, the, from the moment this voicemail was read you know that scene, and I think you should leave her. It's like, oh, I don't want to be around anymore. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I got too much shit on me. No, dude, it's, it, but it's so true because of our circus planet. Like, what uh, this is, this seems normal now. Like, this seems like the only way out. Yeah. I, 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 I there's <laughs> other ways we could do it, guys. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Plus the influence, although I feel like a lot of the Taylor people maybe are not old enough to vote. So we might run into that. Uh, I don't know that that's true. I don't think that's true. Actually, no. you're right, because I bet it's a lot of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I talking about? It's going to be fine. Yeah, I think, I think you know, we're good. I went to I that show. Are... There are tons of people of the voting age there. I, uh, well, I t- I'll tell you what. Here's the one thing I'm going to chime in with, <laughs> with this. Uh, what don't you, you like Google, about this, Alex? What's the problem? I don't like any of it, but what you should look up that I think is fascinating. I believe it's called collective effervescence. Have you heard heard of this experience? And it's it's uh, is this like an makes, ayahuasca thing? Like, what are we no. talking about? Uh, but it it uh, yeah yeah yeah. It's like this idea that like human beings can experience something simultaneously, like in thought, in emotion, and in like 
you can just share an experience entirely and it's like really close to like having like a religious experience okay and um all of that to say i, I have always thought that she was uh, a brilliant genius uh taylor swift particularly in her her activation of like how to get base. people excited about things but ever since i um heard of that term collective effervescence i was like i mean i've we've we've never seen anybody better at it at, like at cultivating an environment with which to make people have like a legitimate like religious experience at a show, show like her and beyonce are the two yeah. who i think could it, do it it's learning you're, you're helping make the case it's I, learning I about like... stuff like that that definitely makes me think that i could start a cult somewhere I could find a pocket of people and start a cult. Yeah, I think and if it, it's not if it's not Taylor Swift, it's probably going to be Nicki Minaj. I mean, she she already reason. has all of the military training that we've yeah, seen from yeah. Call of Duty, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, you, you know, know, Alex. Come on, Alex. Nicki Minaj is in, is in Call of Duty. You yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah right. she is. I still play as her. I've really? not taken is this new. No, uh, no it's been a few um, months ago. Six months, maybe. I'm yeah, still playing. Yeah, like, I'm still playing as August, Nikki. Yeah, August. Yeah, August. All right. She looks cool. I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, who could write it? <laughs> the Nicki Minaj operator bundle. Yeah, dude. This is, you, I'll follow. I'll, 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 let's go. Like, yep. this is this is the My only logical. This bitch is dead. <laughs> Throw it back, baby. Throw a grenade. Love it. Time to tell this bad bitch where your squad's at. To the east. To the north. To the northeast. To the northwest. To the south, to the southeast, to the southwest. All right, so Did good. Thing right, and they indicted me. Are you kidding me? Are you? Who else can save this place? <laughs> Maybe Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Swift yeah, Minaj. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> who could write a more perfect next chapter to this clusterfuck of a timeline? Do you remember when this game, you remember when this franchise, like, had, like, a whole thing in it that was, like, it was, like, a like a post-credits thing that was, like, for the veterans or for, you know, yeah. like, paying respect to <laughs> yeah. war. And, like, what is going on? We're so broken. We don't, we don't, we're, we're not okay. No, no, Alex. You've been watching. You've been following Alex, along. Alex, Nicki Minaj isn't even the weirdest operator in Call of Duty now. No. No, no. You, there's who else is there? I know there's Shredder, there's Spawn, Donnie Darko, <laughs> Donnie Darko's in there. Wait, yeah, Donnie, Donnie Darko, Darko. Like the, the, wait, is it Frank the Bunny or is it actually uh, Frank Donnie the Bunny. Darko? Okay, I was okay. about to be like, did they get Gyllenhaal's likeness for that? Like, so it's what's his face? Um, who played uh, Frank? Oh, Duvall, it? isn't it? What's it? It's the the son of Robert Duvall, is it not? I don't know. That's. Some fun movie uh, information. trivia. I could be wrong, but oh, Skeletor is also in Call of Duty. Yeah, again, like it's not the living person. <laughs> Nikki Minaj. No, it is. Like that's what's getting me so hard, and I think it's. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Feel good about it. There's yeah. Really I. Fun. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy she's getting paid. You know what I mean. Oh, Lara Croft is in it. Oh, Homelander is in there. Snoop Dogg's in there. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ash from Evil Dead. Uh, Twenty One Savage. Twenty One Savage is in there. Twenty One. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Sick. I'm I'm very happy about where this voicemail went. I think again, like. If you if you're keeping score here, just to let you know how we got here, it was over a voicemail asking which band would drop a nuclear bomb on a corporation. <laughs> a la, specifically, a la Johnny Silverhand. Uh, yeah, yeah, what? in in cyberpunk. So that's cyberpunk. that's how we fucking got here, folks. That's what the voicemail dump truck there, can do for you. There is a Kevin Durant. Operator, no, what does he of... even say? That guy's so tall. Then, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's let's do a different. Let's do. We, we 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 must. We must move on, right? I mean, we. we I don't know. I, or can we? Or can we not? Is this the last episode of the voicemail? I don't know. 
Glad you were here. Uh, for someone, now. someone in the Twitch chat said that uh, I just reminded him that Snoop stopped smoking weed. He did not stop smoking no, weed. Right. That was a bait and switch. That was a promotion he did for like a smokeless um, grill? fire pit or yeah. something like fire that, or pit, a grill. Yeah. yeah so uh, all is well in the world. As far I guess as it got me to look it up. To, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Exactly the marketing. I looked it, it up. It was and, not uh, for shoot. It was cheaper, and and that that little grill cheaper than I thought it was, or fire pit cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Yes. Wow, we're we're really touching every corner of the internet today, folks. Um, okay. Chat chat was up next. Chat chose Baja Blast. <laughs> of course it did. Hey, uh, it's Brian, first time caller, long time dumper. Um, I was at the grocery store and saw that it was the 20th anniversary of Baja Blast. Um, not trying to ruin everybody's brain with conceptualizing time, but where were you when you first experienced Baja Blast? All right, love you, bye. Thanks, caller. I've never had it. Yeah, I was nice. I was coming back home, freshman year of high school. My dad had told me which bus to take home, and then he gave me twenty dollars. I took that twenty dollars. I walked to the Taco Bell near the bus stop, and I tried Baja Blast. I changed the soda I chose because Baja Blast was disgusting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a story. That's a thing. Huh. That's a thing. I mean, it's it's is Baja Blast a Mountain Dew thing. It yes. is. It's like a variant. I stopped drinking soda in 2003, and this came out a year later. So ineligible. I was ineligible to try it. I would say like the the first time. I can't think of. Uh, specific memory in which i did this but i can confirm that the first time i had baja blast was long enough ago that i could still eat at taco bell and not have it like wreak irreparable Mm. damage you know what i mean like so it's Mm -hmm. it's, it was definitely early is what i'm saying i was definitely like a little kid sure oh i can see here it's on sale for 52 dollars 24 cans that seems excessive that's like the that's the thing, right? They're like putting putting it out or something. Is that what I had seen? Yeah, some sort of anniversary, right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, so let's, yeah. Uh, we should celebrate soda in that way. I'd actually, all things considered, genuinely, I would yeah. be interested in what a what it tastes like compared to getting it at a location because Fountain is incredibly different than canned. And yeah, I, yeah. Would, I would I would probably go so far as to say that the things that I personally don't like about that flavor profile are probably worse canned. Yeah, is my guess. I, like, generally speaking, I think fountain-based beverages are much worse than canned, right? That's interesting. I, I find that I get more water in fountains, so it's a little mm-hmm. more like I, tolerable. I, Tam, I think mm. the general sentiment is that fountain is is somehow uh, superior. Oh wow! Yeah, I've, yeah. I've never. I hate fountain. Whenever I go to like a movie uh, or and I go to a cinema, or yeah, I went to um, I don't know draft house the other day and got a diet coke, and it was d- disgusting. I was like, this mm. is just gross. It wasn't because diet coke mix. is disgusting, or it was is is that was you think was, it was the product of the Alamo draft house? No, I, it's happened other places as well. Like if I go to like the AMC or whatever, it's always it, always just a bit weird. I like I like if I'm going to drink a soda, I like it to be like very very carbonated. Okay, mm. that's, that's fair. fair. Um, I think I said uh, the other day I let my son try soda the other day, and I, I don't like I'm not I don't want to exaggerate, but it was like watching, like seeing his eyes light up was like yeah. the way that I would imagine. Like it was like watching someone do drugs for the first time. <laughs> it's like when Bart and Millhouse drink that all syrup squishy. Yeah, exactly. Like there's it, it was like seeing it was seeing someone indulge in something that was very sinful and almost taboo and forbidden and just (laughs) him being just like, they let humans do this. Like it was fucking unbelievable. What what soda was it? What soda was it? It was, it it was Dr. Brown's black cherry and Alex Boniel is probably the only one who really can understand what that means. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and we were at a deli and it was just like, Hey man, it's, it's, it's your holiday break, like, have a sip. And he was just like, whoa, what the fuck? Like that, like, it was nuts. It was he, he, I, I'm genuinely curious, did he, like, feel not great after? Like, was there... Well, he, he had maybe, like, 
two shot glasses worth. Okay. Like he wasn't, he didn't have a whole can See, or anything. I, like. I, like if I, I would have like picked him up and been like, now listen, <laughs> anymore. And it's going to start feeling bad, man. Like it's like every time I, I, I have soda as a person who no longer has it, I like any more than that that first hit what's that is it uh what's that movie that's like just one fucking hit is it train spotting what is that <laughs> i think it's train you know spotting. Maybe. Yeah. back it's to danny boyle that. baby yeah we're moving it all the way back around yeah. um the, uh firstly i'm the same now i can't get through an entire can of soda yeah. so i bought one of those things that lets you uh put it on top of a can of soda and reseal it oh yeah, so yeah, yeah i've seen that's that really cool yeah so I, pretty cool. Like, i'll drink a soda over the course of three days one can <laughs> Just get um, the, the second thing ones. is oh, i don't like those they're not good value for money I, um the second thing i want to know is is dylan like has he relapsed is he like do you have any more of that soda stuff that we have? Is he asked or is he like, I don't like he, this? He, no, he asked. We were we went out for uh, Korean barbecue the other day, and he's like, he's like, you think you could, you think I could get a Coke? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, nah, dude. Sorry, Why did man. he uh, did he actually say it like that? As if he's like a man buying a pack of cigarettes. At a, a, he kind a of was. He was he can I get was, a Marlboro, please. <laughs> he lowered his voice, put a fake mustache on, and was sort of like. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a regular man who wishes to have a soda. Uh, they're like, no, dude, sorry. Uh, you know, only the first one, only the first sip is gonna go. Uh, so what? Pro what does he? Here. What does he drink then? Like largely just water. Uh, he's a big water guy. Like, look, we are not. We we can't. <laughs> okay. He's a water boy. Uh, no, we can't. We're not sitting here saying our kid does not eat sugar. A great deal of sugar he does have. Right, the first year, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right, but uh, it's mostly juices, which you know, okay. at least, yeah, he, he's crazy like, amount of sugar and juice. Of course, there is, right? Um, but I think soda is is a bridge too far. Like that is just the one thing that my parents completely had no regulation on with me growing up, and I you, hate the fact that that was my childhood. It, it seems like you can imprint any beverage you want onto him right now. So you have the chance well, of doing something really funny by getting him really into like tea and then um, having him go to like school being the tea kid. He so. definitely had like, at least had like flavored tea. Um, but again, that's, there's a lot of sugar in that too. But I mean, like, uh, get him some water, chamomile, you know? But he, he likes water, man. Like, all the kid thing, you guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, school every day every kid comes goes to school with like a gigantic bottle of water like that's the thing huh yeah you know, like, they don't do milk anymore no not i mean or maybe out of in like big milk nursery pocket, school you know yeah exactly uh you know like that's what he has for uh you know all all throughout the day and lunch so you know definitely not consuming Good for him he's not drinking the same amount of sugar that i do that that's that, for sure that's great like starting off strong you know stay hydrated dylan you know, and once we'll get him in the pocket of big spindrift, then we'll be uh, we'll be home free. Spindrift is ass. Yeah, it's I mean, delicious. You know, Don't you it's say the, that? I think, it's, it's, I think yeah, I think it's really good. I mean, it's either ass or it's amazing. You know, uh, some people like love ass. Movie. Yeah, That's, ah, you beat me. I was going to say Tam Tam didn't say how he feels about. Yeah, pushing, yeah. I but, didn't. I know. didn't. Either way, I didn't say it was a bad thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Give me lime. I could drink fourteen lime spindrifts a day if I had to. I and don't. Maybe a little, a little, a little hack that I think is really nice. There's nothing special about this. I'm sure. I I've been putting uh, bitters in sure. spindrift. Sure. So good. It's yeah. so, It really is great stuff. Hmm. It's uh. It's great. Oh. Oh. It doesn't need any help. I'll say this. It doesn't need any help. But to hear that hack, I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Hmm. It's awesome too. If you're out. This. This. Hey. For people who don't uh, feel like drinking sometimes and you're like out and you still want to be social, could not recommend more just telling the bartender like, hey, can I just get a seltzer with some bitters in it and a lime? Your mind. What is, can you explain what bitters is? I'm not a drinker. Yeah, they're just like, like it's a, an ingredient in like an old fashioned or it's just like a little like, they're little drops of very, oh, it's very. like a syrup, basically. Like, it's yes and no. It's less potent than that, I think, right? Like, yeah. It's like little drops of Worcestershire sauce. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it's not, but no, it's close. <laughs> no, but no, in the, like, in the way that you would like uh, garnish something, I think. Yeah, they're like incredibly low alcohol. Like it, it, there is oh, okay. alcohol in them. Okay, um, in that case, I'm out. Okay. Yeah. What, it's, it's, I've, it's, I've Googled it what exactly it's are bitters. It's Absolutely haram. haram. There's a there's there's absolutely alcohol in it. 
Okay. Oh, see, okay. Uh, bitters are traditionally an alcoholic preparation flavored with botanical matter. For a bitter or bittersweet flavor, originally numerous longstanding brands of bitters were developed as part of, uh, to patent medicines. Fascinating. Very hard. Yeah, herbal flavors. Yeah, yeah, but there is alcohol. Damn. But yeah, I'll, I'll keep that, it halal 100% of the time. Fam. I'm sure they make non alcoholic bitters. Okay, I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Sure um, do, but yeah, at right? that point, I, I, yeah, I, I found when we were in Germany, I think it was, I, I was, I always wanted to, the drink that I always, I'm like, I wish I could have that. It looks so refreshing is a Moscow mule. Yeah. And whenever I see it, I'm like, those look so good. That's and I was the cup. Like, no. It's all the cup. It's I, all the so vibe. So here's the thing. Yeah. So I went to, um, we were in Germany, I think it was. Um, and uh, I was talking about, uh, I wish there was non-alcoholic Moscow mules. And in the place that we were in, they did mo- non-alcoholic Moscow mules. I opened the menu and it was there. And I was like, oh my God. So I tried it and it was incredible. And now I just make uh, non-alcoholic Moscow mules at home. So yeah, what do you put um, instead of like the uh, the vodka? um it's just uh it's the soda water the uh ginger beer lime and uh that's pretty much it lime that uh, sounds refreshing sounds, yeah, sounds great, great. It's very refreshing and the mint obviously yeah, yeah lovely yeah. and you got yourself yeah. those like little copper mugs or what yep i've got those yep beautiful it's beautiful love it uh well my friends we got time for one more voicemail and i just what a journey. Uh, this has been wild. Really? I'm I, like uh, who the places we got, got to see and went and who, who could have guessed um, Alex Boniello, you're our special guest. You will grace us please with the last voicemail of the day. Okay. Um, hmm. I was really hoping that post Malone thing was going to be about magic. The gathering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do canned sardines. No, oh, that's God. a boring one. Oh, wow. In comparison. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Rejected. Okay. Uh, uh, take advantage of. I think that was a good one. I don't remember. And I hope it's nice. <laughs> uh, uh, to the person that asked a question about canned sardines, go Matisse or uh, tin, fi- tin Fish Wife, something like that. DM me. I'll tell you. I got, I got a list. Ah, oh, you do. Wow. Okay. Hello, Giant Bomberinos. My name is Colin, and I am about to have my first son, and I'm very, very excited. It's my first baby, and I have about four months left until my wife gives no, birth. I, I, and I, with all the excitement, I'm wondering, I only have four more months left of having my schedule wide open and having a little bit of selfish time to myself. So my question to all of you is, um, regardless if you have children or not, what should I take advantage of right now with my time? I know I have Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings open, and uh, yeah, so just wanted to see what should I take advantage of before I got a little one um, in the picture. Thanks, guys. Hmm. Uh, I, 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 I can answer this quickly just because it's look, it's been a minute since I dealt with this, but like. And everyone should obviously chime in right off the bat. Fucking sleep. Fucking sleep now. Just sleep. Just sleep now. Like if you have Saturdays and Sundays open, sleep because you're going to forget what it's like to sleep in for a very long time. Um, I only just got it back. Okay. <laughs> and I have an eight year old. <laughs> All right? uh, and over the break when he didn't have hockey on the weekend and we were able to sleep later, it was fucking unbelievable. So you, you're going to, that's going to go away. You're going to miss that. I don't want to tell you what else to do because just do what makes you happy uh, and, and try and think practically about it. I will also say this. I, this is anecdotal. This is my personal experience. I know this experience was shared by other friends that I have that were new parents and they also enjoyed this. There is some downtime, especially in the first like hmm. four months. There is some downtime. I played Bloodborne and Arkham Knight when Dylan was born. And I remember that those games came out right when he was born. And I had like good 90 to two hour, 90 minutes to two hour spots where I could do that. I can't promise you, you will have that as well because every uh, uh, birth is different. Every baby experience is different, but I have found that that is a commonality amongst new parents. Um, Everyone else, uh, please speak to what uh, potentially our, our, our good friend could do. I was going to say sleep. (laughs) Just bank for extra months of it and then move on. <laughs> I think like, I, look, I don't, I don't have a kid. I don't know that I ever will, but I think that 
it's not necessary. This is something that you could do when the child has arrived, but r- write down stuff, write mm-hmm. stuff down that like, I think you're, you're doing and you're feeling in this moment and then keep it going. Like, I don't think I have ever in my entire life through any major moment of my life regretted having been a person who keeps uh, like a journal or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that there's something pretty unreal about that. And I think, um, I don't know, like write, write stuff to yourself, right? I, I turned my eyes to the chat for one second and I can't believe it. Um, I'm being so like earnest and honest. <laughs> I'm sorry for them. I'm sorry. No, it's for really them. good stuff. It's really good stuff. <laughs> write stuff down is what I'm saying. Get a notebook, write stuff down and um, look back on it in 10 years. You know what I mean? Who knows? I, I, the you get these, so I got one of these um, journals, which is like a multi-year journal, mm-hmm. but it's like, so you have maybe like four lines to write something about. Oh, like the five-year journal thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you keep doing it. And then at the end of the year, you start from the beginning again and just go through the same thing again. It's got like multiple slots eff- effectively for it. And then you, you create a three-year journal, which is really, really cool. Um, I was going to say, I also have a version of that, which is like a doodle a day, where it's like you do a little doodle. Um, it's cool. I was also going to say, like, based on, I don't have kids. Um, I have loads of nieces, nephews. I've been around people who have kids. and. I think like the thing that I've taken away is um, it's kind of also dependent on what kind of kid you have, like um, how their temperament is. Because I know like some people have kids that are like they need attention at all times of day. I've also known people who are like, yeah, we had this kid sleeps through the night and wakes up at nine o'clock and is chill about it. And they have been like, we go out, we we watch movies, we watch everything's fine. So it kind of does. I wouldn't consign yourself to the fact that, oh, I, I will never be able to experience joy again until this kid is out at the age of 18, you know? Um, I think maybe just, like, prepare and figure out ways that you can still enjoy the stuff that you like while also having a kid. I think it's really unhealthy to go into a a, a phase of parenting assuming that you will have to shed everything you are to get through it. Um, these days I feel like it's more progressive and I see a lot of people talking about, you know, um, still making the time for yourself. Um, because in, in the long run, that just makes the parenting easier and it's better reflection on the kid itself, kid, kid itself and the person you might be co-parenting with, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, you know, prepare, but also enjoy the things that you want to do, write stuff down, but also don't assume you're never going to be able to do anything ever again. Going off both of those, on top of writing, if you're not the type to write stuff down, if you have terrible penmanship like myself, Hmm. go just take photos with your phone, take small videos, Mm -hmm. and then if you do decide to take a bunch of photos, go and print some of them out and just keep them somewhere. Because I don't have, there's like a whole like waves and pockets of my life where there are no printed photos. I've lost so many because of borked hard drives. So I don't know what I look, I don't remember what I looked like in 2011 because that mm. portion is just gone from the oh. internet because I didn't upload those mm. anywhere. So go do that. This, have you seen the uh, journal app on iOS now? Negative. They've got a pretty cool one where like it will pull things from your phone. It just like looks around, oh, like on this day you took this picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, you can just like be like, I want to add this picture. I, you know, uh, search for this on the internet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a pretty cool little um thing in there that is worth trying as well if you can't be both sit down and write things into a journal you know it's um you get everyone fantastic ideas R- truly like i hope caller you're able to benefit from this because i i endorse all that even if you don't want to write like you said jan you take a photo but also take a video and just narrate the video at the top like what day is it what are you doing say that at the top where you're going to have the ability to search audio in your videos one day and you'll be able to find I'm pretty that. sure you could. You could probably do it now, yeah. right? But like Stacy's a freak with that. She's been doing it for like the last 10 years. And we, and you know, all of our stuff is also auto uploaded, but we just have that. When Dylan turned seven, I started keeping a journal that I addressed to him. Oh, that's cute. Right. So like there's probably, you know, I do it maybe like every six weeks or so. So there's a a dozen or so entries already. It's really awesome. And I love, and you know, maybe when he turns like 18, when he starts to like really dislike me, 
that's when I'll give it to him and be like, you can't dislike me. Look what I did for you, you little shit. Right? That's the plan. And uh, that'll be an A24 film. Exactly. exactly. Cold, you can't dislike me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, honestly, that's a, that's a good name. Hey, I thought of one more thing, if I can share it really quick. Of course. I, uh, I, I probably like early, early in the previous year, I started taking, this sounds so like a jerk, but I started taking film photos. Um, I inherited a, an old camera from my dad and I, and I got into it and, and I started taking photos of things and I really do find genuinely that like when it's such a pain in the ass, you have to line it up. You really have to care. You can't just take it. And I have found that legit, like, especially, you know, I'm in my early thirties, like memories don't get made as easily. Uh, I just find that the memory gets created. Like I have the memories of put it, pulling this camera up and lining the shot up. And then you get the picture back and there's just like a really emotional response. And I, it's, hmm. if you have the means to do this, I, I recommend it. It would be, you'd be amazed at what, what happens just by something being a pain in the ass. To yeah. Be yeah we, were, I, we were talking about that with like succession, right? We we're like, they're shooting on film so they can yeah. get this. Right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Jen, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that like part, some of my favorite photos to come out of this last LA trip are the film photos that Nikki took because it's yeah. such a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just like the aesthetic of film. It's just like the vibe of like, this is a frozen moment in time because of like mm -hmm. the permanence of it, of where like you can't go back and like redo it. I mean, you could just take another photo, but, mm -hmm. uh, for anyone yeah, that wants that to do that. you like six bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. An expensive <laughs> like, thing to do. do yeah. it, like. Uh, but yeah. but the thing is, uh, what you could do is just go to go to oh God. I'm blowing up my own spot here. Go to Shop Goodwill. Go to film cameras, and you could uh -oh. get a decent film camera uh, that is just going on for pennies. Or uh, and, and then you know just buy buy a roll of film. Doesn't even black and white film is generally a little bit cheaper to buy if you don't care about um, uh, halation or or any anything like that. And just, 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 uh, just shoot away. Bl black and white film, you'll get a, generally get a couple more exposures than you would with uh, colored film. It also, longer, don't shoot usually. medium format, though. Well, I, also just good to know because I didn't know this about black and white. It takes longer to get it back. Uh, generally, like I have places that I can get a uh, color roll back to me in like a day, which is awesome. The benefits of living, you know, in um, in and around a major city. But um, I'll also say too if you shoot black and white, you just like look like you're better at it. Like it, it's, it's way easier. It's way easier to get a good shot. It's um, color is really, it's really hard, but wow. Um, nice. Man. Grub, we, Grub said that um, he made uh, uh, Gmail addresses for his kids and just emails them stuff. Yep. Which is very That's cute. So Great cute. call. Oh, Did man. that too. So yeah. Yep. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Jeff Grub. Uh, it's, uh, Jeff Grubb, it's it's just it's just a bunch of his neon white times, and he's just like, <laughs> it's like it's just with nothing, no explanation, just like it's just a list of all of his scoops. Yeah, Before yeah. Before he does yeah. them, he writes them and sends it to his bunch kids. of bylines. This is what I did. Remember me. This is current a, a thoughts on of, Interstellar. A yeah. bunch of DS ROMs. They're like, <laughs> what is it? I I gotta say, you guys, uh, this show really uh, is what a pleasure. What a beautiful episode, right? Mm. Uh, you're all very beautiful people. I know we joke around at each other's expenses all the time, but truly, I love you all. Uh, that I guess that goes for Dan Reichert as well. But seriously, this is such a highlight of the week. Thanks, everyone. Uh, the callers, the chats, everyone who is a part of this program, really appreciate it. And of course, Alex Boniello gracing us with your presence. Oh, stop. Getting in touch with you at the perfect time. Yeah, I was What's walking better? out the door, everyone right? who doesn't know that. You're the best. <laughs> um, and Tam, mm. it's been a minute since you've been here, so thank you for... Yeah, for I haven't been on Voice My Dump Truck in a bit, but uh, you'll, you'll see plenty of me these uh, on these in the future all right sounds like a threat i'm into it we'll be yeah. back uh next week with a brand new episode of the voicemail dump truck you have to uh make sure that you ensure your slot in the madness that is this podcast give us a call 707 exit flu that's gonna do it for us 
Jan, I'm assuming you're still rendering, so we will have oh, to it's see on, this. Oh, it's on Twitter. It's on Twitter it's now. It's already there, baby. Oh, it's on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. I love it. Well done. Uh, we'll be back next week, there, everyone. Thanks so much. All the callers, all the chat, chat, chats. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.